Tonight, starring Arthur O'Connell with special guest star David... Where were you Thanksgiving when I needed you? In the Old West, as in other parts of the world, the study of birds was a favorite pastime. One of the first actual bird-watching societies was formed in Enid, Arizona, in May 1849. Strange as it seems, the club was formed because members wanted to fly like birds. The club disbanded, though, after the third meeting because of a tremendous fight in the local saloon. They didn't know how to get in the air, but they sure knew how to get high. As men studied the sky, they came to realize that some birds could stay aloft with little effort by gliding into the air currents. One of these was the eagle. He could stay up there for hours without even flapping his wings. He was stuffed too soon. One of the ugliest birds was this crane. If my leading lady had legs that skinny, I'd throw her out of the studio. A great deal was also learned about the speed of birds. For instance, small birds like sparrows and blue jays could fly, oh, about 15 to 30 miles an hour, and ducks and geese could fly 40 to 60 miles an hour. But here's old Speedy Gonzalez himself, a prairie falcon. And believe it or not, he could fly at speeds up to 100 miles an hour. You try that on our freeways, old boy, and you'll wind up a jailbird. In our story this week, entitled The Broken Wing, A Boy Tries to Fly, our star is Arthur O'Connell, and our special guest star, young David Ladd. <laughs> was done. Oh, Polly. Oh, no, don't, don't. Uh, come in here. In here, quick. Wait till I hide the cake. Quick, quick. Lyman! Lyman, where are you? Lyman? Lyman, come in. In here. I was just after wrapping this and quick before he comes. Come on. Come on. Lyman, wait and see what I got. Ada. Ada, wait and see. Lyman, wait and see what I got. I look them all over, see? A rack full. I mean, nearly 100. I counted. 98, I counted. And then I seen it, just this one. You know what it cost me? 45 cents? 45! Oh, I mean, there were others for less, but all I kept thinking was, won't that boy be all over a yellow with pride? To... A knife? Huh? A Wilson. A genuine Wilson. Uh, that blade never laid eyes on the likes of it. Carbon steel. Now look at here. Look at here. A saw. A saw blade. How about that? A saw blade. 45 cents. All week long, I've been thinking of it. Nothing else. I mean, a boy turns 12. That's a man. What could you get? Oh, Magnus, he'll go out of his mind. Now, we'll do it this way. Out of his mind, he'll go right through the ceiling. <laughs> now, uh, what was I? Yeah, yeah. Ada, you bring in a cake, and we'll do it before dinner. No, no. Hold the cake for after. Hold the cake for after. Now, listen. Uh, when he comes in, listen, when he comes in, we'll, we'll sit him right here. No, no. We'll, uh, we'll sit him right there, see? Right there. And then, Lyman, you give him that thing of yours, whatever you got, see? And then, uh, then I... Uh, failure! Where you been, boy? Fillion, what happened? It's nothing, Ma. Just a fall. Coming over the field. Well, we've been waiting for you, boy. Well, I was after washing up first, Pa. All right, hurry up, hurry up. He'll like it, won't he? Of course he'll like it. Lyman, right through the ceiling. I should have wrapped the ribbon or something. <clears throat> uh, we, uh, <laughs> we want to wish you a happy birthday, son. Your Uncle Lyman, your Ma and me. Uh, we... <clears throat> Come on, Lyman. Uh, it isn't much, Fagan. I couldn't find very much, but um, happy birthday. Well, take it, boy, take it. It won't unwrap itself. <laughs> Uncle Lyman! Well, they're a book. Oh, oh that's right, finding Uncle Lyman. Right, finding it. Yes. Now, I... It's your favorite. Well, uh, a man's no friend to a favorite unless he shares it. Ma, look what he gave me. Yeah, well, look at here, son. Dad, listen, an Icarus and the wooden well, horse. Well, thing you, you ain't see what I got. Look at a knife, son. Look at here, a knife. Ma, huh? it's champion. It's champion, Ma. No, you ain't seen. Look at how it works. Look at here, that blade, pure steel, and and here, a, and a saw for the cut. <laughs> Why a boy with a knife like this? You know what it costs? Forty-five cents. The best in the store. Forty-five. Five, the best in the. Best. It's a prideful thing, Pa. I thank you for it. 
You don't come to the table looking like that. Wash up. I, I was just after to when you... Now, why are the horses been fed? Don't hitch the runner and put them to corral and feed the horses. And hurry up for dinner. Your ma's got cake. Pa? Valian? The Lyman? Do what your father told you to do. What did I do wrong? He acts like always I do something wrong. Feed the horses, boy. Just what the water's deep this time of the year. Well, it wouldn't be deep if somebody rolled them barrels under the hills and filled them with water. I'll tell Thalion that. You'll tell Thalion. You tell him. No. No, you tell him. It always seems to pack some weight when you tell him a thing. Tell him we're near out of water. And tell him his ma bleeds the calluses off her hand from pumping it. And tell him his pa just ain't got time to go to the hills on the corner. There's that crop to get to at three in the morning to pay for the cost of that night. And tell him there's a whole stack of hay to be pitched into the barn. No. Now you tell him his Uncle Lyman's a busting with thirst and the kind of setting there reading them books all day. That'll put hop to him. Magnus, what happened in there with the knife? I'm sorry. I ain't talking about the knife. What's a knife to me? I'm talking about you, lazing around like. What would you have me do? Judas, priest, you think a man could raise a little water? No, no, let's hear it. What would you have me do, go out in the fields with you? Go up to the hills and get the water myself? I'd give my good leg if I were able to. Nah. My good left leg and you know I would. Jason Valman's twice the cripple of you. A whole leg gone, to the hip and an eye. He still plows half a section a day and he'll cut a brace of picks of the bargain. But you, my brother, my own blood brother, raise your hand to help, even saddle a horse or pull a weed? Oh, no, not you. I do what I can. You do nothing. No. No, I take it back. Them books, that's what you do. Filling that boy full of fancy notions, lies. How there's something more than what I got to give him? You do take your time to come around to things. Some magic to take him off to a never land. Well, there ain't. There's nothing more for him or me or you. Never was or will be. There's only that field of hay, 124 acres of work and sweat and fighting to beat back weeds and blight and flesh woods are sweeping down the hill of battling to wipe me out. Well, that's my gift to him, Lyman. It ain't a thought to match them fleecy words of yours, but it puts a roof to his head. Only I die tomorrow. Tomorrow, Lyman, if I die, who does that for him? We're both important. We both. ain't. Because all I got to offer him is what there is. And next to you, I don't come off a pretty sight. What do you want from me? I want them dreams took out of his life. I want him knowing what his life is. Well, they buy for him what they bought you. Bust up leg and a body of flesh worth nothing. Just leeching on others to feed. If my being here is a burden to you. There's a train out for Wichita Sunday evening. I'll drive you to it. This notion, not mine. How can two right men be so wrong? Father told you to wash for dinner. I don't want to eat dinner with them. Your mother baked a cake. Oh, it's a wondrous cake, the grandest cake you ever saw. Well, why can't we eat dinner here, just you and me? Valiant. Oh, please, Uncle Lyman, I don't want to eat dinner with him. But this is your birthday, son, and he's your father. We can eat it right here. Or over there. Make a place and if we can pretend that I know that we're inside the wooden horse. In the house, that'll be the wall we gotta break down. In the hayfield out there, that'll be the battleground. We're not in the wooden horse. We're in the barn. I know, but we'll pretend. The barn. And the house is not the walls of Troy, it's your home where you live. 
Well, then, then what about Daedalus Nicarus? Like it reads in here. The barn could be the tower. Hey. And you could make us wings to escape across the sea with. Lima. That book, it's only a book, just stories. <laughs> You're making a joke. Just stories, not a tooth in any one of them. I don't like that kind of joke. If I thought you really believed there was any truth in any one of those, nobody ever built a wooden horse and fly. Do you really believe they did that? They flew? You said they flew. Dreams, then. Only dreams. That story was somebody's dream. They built wings and they flew. Nobody ever flew, ever I know. I flew. Look. Wings. Oh, if you'd seen, only seen. I took him out to the wash at the end of the field every morning and I... Climbing, I flew. Not much, no more than four feet. But I could feel him holding me up in the air. But then I couldn't seem to keep the tips from... No. I mean, not because of the weight. All the way home, I was thinking, what if I built them so the tips wouldn't fall? No. And maybe went off something higher, like the roof of the barn. No! 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 Before dinner, didn't you hear a word I said? You don't think I tell you anything that wasn't true? You said people flew. Only in dreams. Ever since I know, you said they did it. Don't you know what dreams are? Dreams of wonderful, beautiful moments in a man's mind. Exciting, but fragile, not to be touched. But you know what we do? We build so much into them that we deceive ourselves into thinking that they're true. You can't live a dream. Look at me, I know. 30 years ago, I wasn't even your age. I tried to live a dream. The same dream you are trying to live now. I built a pair of wings, and I went off a pepper tree. Look at that thing. Look at it! That's what I got, trying to live a dream. But I flew! It didn't. You can't. If I'd gone up higher, you just weren't up high enough. Those wings wouldn't carry you a foot. The spars are split the minute you hit the air. I can do it! The canvas is too heavy. It's like a stone on your back. I can fly! Your wing tip dipped. You told me they did. You couldn't hold them out. Well, then I'd put a limb across from tip to tip. You got one strong enough to weigh 10 pounds. Then twine. One good puppet snaps. Twine snaps. Well, then I'll find something stronger. There isn't anything stronger. Wire. We'll leave those struts. Take an oak limb. You know what oak does? Bends, doubles up. Well, then I'll use hickory. And the canvas. What about that? Well, I'll use something lighter. Muslin. Uh, you got no muslin. Where? My bed. The sheet off my bed. You really think you can do it, don't you? I know I can. You have to go off in the morning. This is a small east wind, strong enough to carry you across the yard. You need the hay to break your fall. And the wind, like a bird, you gotta watch them glide, always into the wind. Glimmer. I'm not saying we do it. I'm not saying that. Well, I can do it. We'd have to be right first. They'll be right. I'd have to be sure. I'll get the hickory. First thing tomorrow morning, I'll go up in the woods and cut us some long, thin strips. It's like from the barn. We could work in the morning while Pa's out in the field. And Sunday after church. Then it won't work. Huh. If I don't try, how will we ever know? <laughs> thing you do, young man, is get out of your Sunday bed. I got your ticket for church. Train goes out at 7, give it take a half hour. We'll drive in at 5 after dinner. I'll be ready. Just so it ain't with happiness. With all my words, I, I beg you no will. Turkey. Huh? 
dumped on dressing. Even pulled some carrots. Magnus liked to kill me when he saw the turkey. Till I told him it seemed little enough it'd be in your last meal. I have to eat the carrots raw, though. I just give up trying to draw water for something like carrots. Thought to brown you, isn't it? Where will you go? I don't know. It's good that you go. I never knew you felt that way. Not you. I feel that way. Sad about it, but I feel that way. Not for you or me. For Thalian. Don't misunderstand. What you've given him, dreams, is a purely fine thing. It's something Magnus could never do. It's why you've given him dreams I want you to go. Why have I given him dreams? You want him to make good where you've always been afraid to. Afraid? You want to lick your failures through him. You think that's why I've given him dreams? You can stand there and think that? I'll boil up some eggs for your trip. No! Lyman, are you all right? All right. Go oh, on. What happened? Oh. oh. The morning wind's turning. I'll clean up. Come on, Uncle Ivan. Yes. Dinner's at one. Yes, Paul. take it from each other.
didn't tell him I was going. I couldn't find a way, like everything else. If you're ready. It's only 2.30. The train don't go out, not till 7. I thought you'd be in a hurry. I was sitting here thinking. Not that I say I can do it, but... Suppose I put me a cut through the mountains and brought that water down. I'd give you it's a pretty wild notion, but... Well, maybe that's what it takes. Well, if you came down the north side... Oh, rock. Too much rock. You'd have to blast. I could make a deal with Raider. Keep his horses in hay for dynamite. The trick is to cut through the top, knowing where. If we took a run up there, we could beat the light for an hour or two. Look it over. Why don't you go saddle the horses? I'll get the map. Oh. <laughs> I forgot. I'll saddle the horses. Ada'll want to know you're staying. <laughs> 